Hey guys, it is me again. All right, I was waiting for my little bubble to pop up, but it didn't. So it throws me off when it don't. Anyway, guys, thanks for being here. Today is uh, Sunday, January 15th. Makes it, of course, day 15 on our Daily Bread Project 2012. Hope you guys are doing all right tonight, as always. I really, really do. I'm going to try to make this video shorter than last night's video, that night, almost 20 minute video last night. That was a uh, that was a nightmare, nightmare for everybody with uh, ADHD, uh, like I accused Mad Bad Voodoo of having. Uh, of course, he is right. I think all of us have got a case of it every now and then, but uh, I am going to try to make this shorter, guys. So I do thank you all for being here, as always. Uh, hope you all are doing all right. Having decent weather. Uh, I mean, our weather's not too bad. Well, it could be worse. Uh, we've had probably since Thursday night, we've probably had, I don't know, three or four inches of snow. Uh, it's, uh, you know, melted away and then snowed again and melted away. Uh, we had about an inch of snow overnight. Uh, so we, we did have church today. I praise the Lord for getting to do that. We only had 12 people there, I think. Uh, but we had a good time, and that's the thing about it, you know. Uh, seems like sometimes you have your best times on days, you know, like that, and we did. We had a good time, had a good Holy Spirit filled service, uh, you know, and uh, praise the Lord for that. So, uh, the weather's supposed to be better here this week. Uh, so, you know, it's, uh, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, let's see what else, guys. Uh, oh, I uh, did a little more powder coating tonight. Uh, you guys can't tell anything about this, but uh, I actually uh, this is metal flake red. This is actually like you know car metal flake paint. It's actually got metal flakes in it. I think they use aluminum flakes in it. Uh, I did this little piece. Uh, and it turned out good, but the thing is with this metal flake paint, and I guess it's just to keep the, the chips from coming out of it when it gets touched, uh, they recommend that you clear coat it. You know, the other stuff you can if you want to, but you don't have to. With this, they kind of say, you know, clear coating is highly recommended uh, for durability. So I went ahead and clear coated it, and it looks good, but I've got orange peel in the clear coat. And... Uh, I don't know, I've been online kind of reading, trying to figure out what causes uh, uh, powder coat, uh, clear coat to orange peel. And a lot of people says that it's bad for doing that. And some people say you can't stop it completely. Uh, but what gets me is some people said it's from being too thin. Most people say it's from being too thick. And I'll tell you what I think happened, guys. See, I pulled it out of the oven from, from baking the red, from baking the, the metallic. And it was still 230, 240 degrees. I checked it with the temp gun when I sprayed the clear on it. Well, the first coat of clear that I put on it, I kind of sprayed around it, went around it, and, you know, looked and then turned my head back, and one whole surface side of it where I'd sprayed the clear, it had already turned back shiny. I guess that clear actually melted into it. So, see, then I went around it and put another coat on it and then put it in the oven. So to be honest about it, I think it's where I've done it with it with it hot like that and it melted in. I think I just got it too thick. I think if I would have got it thinner, uh, it wouldn't orange peel as bad. Some people said though the they said if you put if you put it on too light, it'll have real fine orange peel real close together. But if you put it on too thick, it'll have like a, a rolling wave orange peel. Uh, so I don't know. I'm just gonna have to experiment with it and try to try to figure the orange peel deal out. Some people said it was from uh, not high, having a high enough uh, temperature in your oven when you put it in to let it flow quick enough. Uh, I went by the instructions, you know, the instructions say to, to cure it at 375. Most of the powders cure at 450 till they start flowing out, then you turn them down to 400. Well, they say not to do that with the clear because if you cure it over 400 degrees or, or really up around 450, the powder could turn yellow instead of clear looking. So, I don't know. I just have to figure that out. 
something I'm, I'm going to see on it though. I'm kind of curious to see if you can actually sand and buff the orange peel out of powder coat like you can paint. I wouldn't see why you couldn't. I mean, they're both basically made of this close to the same stuff. You know, they're both made out of urethane based, you know, paint that you put on a car is basically liquid plastic. Most people don't look at it that way, but it basically is. It's liquid plastic. Same stuff this is. So, I don't know. Just goofing off. I think I may try that. I might get me some like a 1500 grit or 2000 grit tomorrow and sand this little piece up and see if I can, see if I can buff that orange peel out of it. Be kind of interesting anyway. Anyway, guys, uh, not take up too much time. Like I said, I'm, I'm not going to make another 20 minute video tonight. Uh, Brother Darren, if you see this, and I know everybody's getting tired of me having these big dialogues with Darren, but I'll try to try to make it quick. Um, I emailed Andrea, which I'm sure she'll get back with me. Um, again, the question that I asked you uh, last night, which I told her to ask you, uh, if you think a quart of clear will be enough to do mom's car, which I think it will be, uh, you know, I got to thinking while ago actually about how much a quart is, and uh, you know, I've painted out of quarts before, and a, a quart, you know, is quite a bit, you know, just to do the the roof and and the trunk, uh, you know, I think that it should at least let me put what two coats on it, you know, I don't see you needing over that, not on an old hundred fifty thousand mile car. Uh, but anyway, if you think a quart would be enough and everything, that's the way I'd rather go because, to be honest, I just don't have the money to buy the gallon right now. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and just let Andrea, uh, you know, tell me how to pay you all. And I'll go ahead and, you know, pay pay you the money or ever how because I want to try to get this stuff maybe sent out this week. You know, that way, uh, that way by the weekend I can be doing something. So uh, just tell her to get up with me on that. Um I heard something, guys. That's the reason I was looking around here. Uh, I think Dad's going to bed on bed. I think I heard him uh, sneaking around in there. But anyway, um, yeah, brother, just, you know, like I said on that, if uh, if you think the court of clear would do it, let her, uh, you know, let her go ahead and, and get me the final price if she wants to figure shipping or whatever. Get it to me, uh, and, and I'll get you guys some uh, some money on the way. Okay, now having said that, I want to ask all you painter guys, which probably just be two of you, Darren and Milo, I'm probably going to buy a new paint gun to do this car with. Uh, I've got old cheap guns that I bought at the parts house, three of them for 100 bucks, and they do a decent job for what I've been doing. Uh, I've got a 1.4 tip gun, a 1 millimeter tip uh, touch-up gun, and then a 1.7, I think, primer gun. Well, I figured I would use maybe the 1.4 gun or whatever for the sealer and stuff, but I'm going to buy a new gun to shoot the base in the clear. Now, here's my, my stick, guys. I'm probably, just because, you know, money's so tight right now, I'm going to buy a Mac Tools gun probably. I've been looking because, uh, see, I can buy a Mac gun, and my Mac guy won't raise my payment any. I was going to get maybe like a, a gun from Snap-on, but everything I buy on there, the more I buy, he raises my payment. And, I, you know, the Mac man don't do that to me. So I'm probably going to go with a Mac gun. I don't know who makes their guns, but I'm sure it's probably DeVilbus. Or, you know, they're a decent gun. I, you know, I, I'm sure they're a decent gun. What I needed to, what I needed you guys to chime in on, and like I said, the reason I'm buying that is because, you know, I can get it without having to fork up any money. Uh... What size tip gun do I need to get? Would you recommend? And I know this is probably going to be an opinion. You can get a 1.3 tip, a 1.4 tip, a 1.5 tip, and then like a 1.7 and 8 or something like that. They make several different tips. Uh, I was leaning towards the 1.3 or 1.4, just in my opinion. But you guys tell me, does that really matter? Uh, and what would you go with, a 1.3 or a 1.4? Whatever the case may be, guys, just kind of just kind of give me that uh, general tip if you can. Like I said, all you paint guys, I would, uh, you know, or you know, is is a tenth of a, a millimeter really enough to worry about? Uh, you know, does it not matter? Just kind of chime in on that, guys, and I would appreciate it. So let's see. I think it's got all that taken care of. Like I said, I just wanted to tell Darren to to uh, you know let Andrea know if he thinks that quarter clear will do the car. Then I'm going to go ahead and get them the money tomorrow sometime and uh, go ahead and get that stuff sent my way. 
So, I think that's got everything, guys, I wanted to talk about. See, we are going to make this video shorter tonight. Let's see. Let's get to the important part tonight, guys. And, of course, that is the Word of God. So, starting in Romans, chapter 8, starting in verse 5. Here we go. Oh, one more thing before we start. I did want to say welcome back to Brother Woody. I know you've been a few days uh, that you've not been here, brother, and I appreciate you catching up. And it is, uh, it's so good to have you back. So I did want to say uh, hello to Brother Woody. So, okay, Romans uh, 8, chapter, excuse me, I, I tend to do that sometimes. Romans chapter 8, verse 5, here we go. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Guys, we see this so much today. The sad thing is, most people that think they're Christians, they're so carnally minded. I just tell you, you got to wonder about them. you got to wonder about them. We've got some people, and I know when I say stuff like this, I make people mad. But, you know, I, I, when I feel the Lord puts it on me, you know, and I'm telling the truth, I just got to say it. We were talking about that today. We, we've got several sets of people in our church. Uh, you know, and if any of those people ever see this, and I don't know if, I don't, I doubt anybody from my church watches these, but if they do ever see it, you know, instead of getting mad, I want you to know that, that we love you and we're, and that, you know, I say these things because it's the truth and we want the best for you. We've got several sets of people in our church right now that have not been coming to church in a while and, and they'll see people, you know, see church members out and about. And the first thing they always say is, well, I've got a lot of stuff going on in my life, you know, a lot of bad stuff. And as soon as I get all this straightened out, I'll be back to church. You know, guys, we got to let the Lord straighten our problems out. You know, when we're having the, when these problems and these things in our lives that are just strangling us down to the ground. You know, it may be because I'm such a weak person, and I thank the Lord that I'm like this, but when I have these problems, I want to run to God. I want to run to church. Church makes me feel better. I'll just be honest about it. You can call it a crutch or whatever you want, but getting in the house of the Lord with, with 10 or 15 or 20 or 25 fellow believers, being in, in most of you at least, being in one accord, singing, praising God's name, hearing preaching, hearing people giving testimonies, hearing people giving prayer requests, you know, that just, that makes me feel better. That, that, I mean, it, to me, that's healing right there. And what I, what I tell you, and not just people in my congregation, but I mean, people everywhere, guys, don't say, I'm going to get my life straightened out. Then I'm going to go to God. See, that's what, what reminded me of this, of being carnally minded. We think I can take care of this myself. You know, I'll straighten all these things in the world out, all these problems in my life in the world. Then I'm going to go to God. No, guys, we've got to go to God first. God wants to handle our problems. God wants to take care of our problems. But we got to go to him with them. That's the thing most people don't realize. God's not going to sit back on the sideline. You're not praying to him. You're not coming to him. You know, it's kind of one of those deals. He's always willing to give help, but you got to ask him for it. That's just the truth. That's the way he works. You've got to ask him for it because you've got free will. He don't impose himself on anybody. So let's ask the Lord for help, guys. Let's be, quit being so carnally minded. Verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Of course, this, now I've got on my big rant. This will probably be a 20-minute video. No, that wasn't a rant, guys. That was, that was preaching to help somebody. Verse 8. So, that, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. That's when we're in the flesh, we can't. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man hath not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. Man, this is good stuff. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. See, that's what we were when we were sinners. We live after the flesh. We're debtors to the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. And, and there's no good way about saying it, guys. When we're sinners, before we're saved, we're heading into death, hell, and destruction. And that's it. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. 
For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, and I love this telling us not to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That's what I was saying today, guys. When we're having these problems in our lives, we can't say, well, I'm going to fix them, then I'm going to go to God. God wants us to cry to Him, Abba, Father, help me. I've got these problems in my life that are tearing me down, whether they're financial problems, health problems, problems with children, problems with grandchildren, drug problems, alcohol problems, marriage problems, you know, divorce problems. We've got to cry out to him, Father, help us. Well, I need you. That's what he wants. And when we let him work, we let him do these things, man, it's just amazing the power that, that, that he will show through us. So anyway, guys. Uh, you know, talking about again not having the spirit of fear here, the bondage again to fear. You know, that's what I was talking about today, complaining. That's actually what I preached on was complaining. And, you know, to be honest about it, guys, if we look at it, and I'm bad for that. I'm bad for complaining. Not near as bad as I used to be, but, you know, we still do it. When we complain, if you'll think about it, we're showing lack of faith. And that's the truth. When we're complaining, when we're saying, oh, you know, and I do it. Oh, you know. Now, I'm, I'm not going to say, guys, you know, when I asked you guys for prayer or or something for my business. That's not complaining, you know, but uh, I really don't complain to you all, but you know, I do mope around sometimes. Come on, oh Lord, you know, here, my business ain't doing no good and this ain't doing no good and my church ain't, you know. But at least if we are going to complain one side note on that, it's it's good to go to God. Take it to God. Complain to God. Like I read the day to him, it's better to complain to God than it is about God. Don't ever complain about God. Uh, look at... Uh, Moses and Aaron's sister, what was her name, Miriam, was it, something like that, uh, I read it today, but I can't think of it, where she she was complaining, her and Aaron was complaining about what God was doing with Moses, they were jealous, what did God do, he gave her leprosy, and it was only by, by Aaron and, and Moses, of course I don't know why he struck her down and not Aaron, because he was complaining too, uh, you know, I don't know what, you know, he didn't say why that, but Thankfully, Moses went to the Lord and he said, Lord, you know, this is my sister, uh, you know, heal her. And the Lord said, all right, you know, keep her out of the camp for seven days. After the seven days, bring her back in. She'll be healed. You know, but we can't complain, guys. We, that's showing lack of faith. We got to, when people ask us how we're doing, we need to say, I'm doing good. I'm doing great. I'm a child of God. I'm blessed. Even if we've not had a good day, even if we've not had a good week, even if we've not made any money this week, or if we've not felt like we've done anything worthwhile this week. We're still blessed to be here, guys. So let's show it. Anyway, guys, good Lord willing, I'll be here tomorrow night to uh, keep going in Romans chapter 8. I love you guys for being here. Brother Milo, love you, brother, for everything you do. Uh, hope you can get your car fixed soon, which I know that you will. Um, all you guys, like I said, I thank all y'all for being here. Mad Bad Voodoo, Richard, brother, I love you. Thank you for being here. I tend to forget you when I mention names, and I don't know why, because you're always here. Uh, and you're certainly not a forgettable person. You're probably one of the most unforgettable guys on here, so I don't know why I do that, but uh, maybe it's because I'm so used to you being here. I don't know, but anyway, like I said, I thank all y'all for being here. Uh, Brother Darren, like I said, if you can if you can just, uh, which you may have already, because I emailed Andrea like at 9 o'clock tonight. She may have already asked you, you know, it, you know, like I said, I just, I want to get that pain on the way this week if I can. Uh so, uh, it, it, like I said, if, if you think that a, a court, a clear will do the car, that's what I'll buy. Let her send me a total if she can or, or whatever what I've got to do to pay you guys because I want to get that stuff on the way. Um, and you body guys, paint guys, let me know about that fluid tip size on that gun because I am going to buy a gun too. So, anyway, guys, thank you all for being here. I love you all. This vid's longer than I wanted it to be. Sorry about that again, Richard. Uh, but, uh. I'll try tomorrow night, guys, to cut it down. I love you all. If you need anything, let me know. I'll be here tomorrow night, guys, good Lord willing. Till I see you all again, good night, and God bless.